New Wall Street Journal poll finding only 37 percent of voters approve of President Biden's handling of the economy. 59 percent disapprove. This is the same poll as revealing just 28 percent of voters say the economy has gotten better in the last two years. 58 percent say it's getting worse. Joining me now is Texas Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. She's a member of the Ways and Means and Small Business Committees. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. You have one more week before you return to Washington. What are you hearing from your constituents about uh, about the economy, how they're feeling, and, and most importantly, about inflation? Because President Biden yesterday was speaking and said that Bidenomics is working for all. You know, I, I wonder who those 37 percent of, of people are who think that the economy is doing well when we're facing 16.6, you know, increase in inflation since Biden's taken office. We're looking at 20 percent increase in food, 38 percent increase in energy costs. We're looking at 45 percent less homes being bought uh, because interest rates are so high. We're looking at skyrocketing people not able to pay their credit cards on time. And then we're also looking at a budget deficit that's getting ready to double in one year to two trillion dollars. That typically only happens during a recession or during war. And what we keep being told by this administration is that there's no recession. And yet we are continuously seeing more and more spend. People are hurting at, at every every time they pull out their wallet. And my Democrat colleague's only answer is to spend more money. So I think we're going to go back in the fall. We're going to have a lot of, of very, very serious discussions, um, you know, amongst our, our House colleagues about, you know, further spending, making sure that we're cutting it, not making these massive amounts of pandemic spending the norm, and getting back to uh, having a reasonable budget Congress and being confident. Taxpayer dollars. Several of your colleagues, and, and forgive me, I, I don't know if you're one of them, but s several congressional Republicans have been saying that they are moving closer to pursuing an impeachment uh, move uh, case against the president. Yeah. Uh, 52, this is in the Wall Street Journal poll, 52% of those oppose impeaching President Biden, 41% in yeah. favor. That's a 11% that's a you know, sp spread there. How, how do you handle that if voters are saying they're not really excited about seeing an impeachment of the president? I think part of the problem is the information hasn't been released. You know, we have had um, a fight after fight with these government agencies, the FBI, the DOJ, even the IRS trying to get information out. What that tells me is that people have not been informed about all of the information that's coming out between Chairman Comer and Chairman Jordan's committees and that we need to do a much better job. And I would love if the media would actually, and, and you know, Fox News aside, you know, other, other stations that are, are, are reporting on this, but what we're seeing is they're not. So I think when they start seeing the amount of information that's coming out from these committees, the amount of fraud that's been going on, the amount of cover-ups that have been going on, um, the, the amount of money that, that has been owed to the IRS and yet somehow covered because the Biden name is attached to it, I think when that information starts coming out, you're going to see a lot more people that are supportive of an impeachment inquiry, at least an impeachment. I have been supportive of this. I've been asking for it since July because I have seen the cover-up which obviously those numbers are reflecting. Yeah, my apologies for not being aware, but and, and voters also in this poll say they're more aware of the indictments of former President Trump than they are about the Hunter Biden investigations. Let's peek, so Jumping. So I see on CNN and all you see on MSNBC. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Let's so, peek with me, Lisa. Um, so the liberal uh, media is already raising red flags about a possible shutdown, a government shutdown, how terrible this would be. Realistically, what can Congress try to accomplish in the way of spending cuts? Because I do think this is an issue that appeals to a wide swath of Americans, the fact that our deficit is exploding again, as you point out, not in time of war, not in time of recession, but because basically the Democrats are buying votes. I think there's a huge appetite for spending cuts, but there is this issue of shutdown and whether or not politically that hurts or helps the GOP. Where do, where do you stand on that? And what are your expectations? I think you saw when the House was the only body that actually passed a bill with a Limit Save Grow Act that would have prevented a shutdown, that would have prevented a default. It was also the largest um, spending cut in our nation's history that Republicans were serious about cutting it, but also avoiding a default. We're going to try to avoid a shutdown, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, the only power that Congress has to hold these agencies accountable to do their jobs 
is the power of the purse. Those are the deep discussions that we're going to have when we go back into well, session. Well, yeah, I know. Obviously, that October 1st deadline, you know, we ran out of money that date. Uh, I don't think anybody really wants to run up against that data, in particular the ratings agencies that uh, monitor our credit. Uh, but we'll see what Kevin McCarthy comes up with on that short-term CR. I do want to get into what you're doing, Congresswoman. You're launching this investigation into the Small Business Administration. After a new report from the agency's inspector general found it overpaid a contractor millions of dollars for running COVID pandemic loan programs. Can you ex um, explain more about this investigation? Sure. Basically, what we found was was a during the time of the pandemic, there were billions of dollars that were thrown at the SBA to try to get small businesses funding that they needed so they wouldn't have to lay off employees, they wouldn't have to shut their doors. SBA has had now three years to review these programs. The the inspector general's office has had time to review what what exists as far as waste, fraud, and abuse, and they have a number of different recommendations that they've made, a number of different reports. What we've seen from SBA's instead of acting on these recommendations from the inspector general's office, they're often ignoring them, publicly ridiculing them, and stuffing them under the rug. This was a particular example of where they had outsourced tremendous amounts of work to larger firms, even though it was specified that it would be small businesses, they overpaid to large firms in excess, I mean, multi multinational corporations. And instead of looking at where um, the billings were, for example, in Washington, D.C., which is where they build almost exclusively 100 percent of the billing, much more expensive, nearly, nearly 12 to 18 percent more than other areas of the country. That's what they were billing, even though these employees were in places like Dallas. Um, and should have gotten paid a lot less. But what we have found is there are a number of instances that the SBA has overpaid, has not looked at waste, fraud, and abuse, which is low-hanging fruit, even though it's been called out by the inspector general. And holding these agencies accountable is what Congress has got to do. And every time we ask them for, for an answer, their answer is always the same. We need more people and we need more money. We saw what happened during the pandemic. When they got more people, we got more money. We got more waste, fraud, and abuse of bureaucracy. And that's what we're trying to fight as Republicans in the House right now. You mentioned that company Highlight Technologies. If you were to, to guesstimate, basically guess, on the amount of fraud that has been lost under this, can you give me a number? Under this specific, under this specific example, at least, yeah, it's, but not it's, more. It's, it's it's a, but I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot yeah. more out there. I think we all know that there's oh, a lot oh. more waste and fraud that has come yeah. from it's the pandemic spending programs. Interesting that you asked that question. It's interesting that you asked that question because when we had the administrator, uh, Administrator Guzman, in front of our small business committee, we asked her that question, and she could not provide us with an answer. The <laughs> Inspector General's office has said it's hundreds of billions of dollars. And this is what we are trying to fight to get back. And unfortunately, we have we have a, 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 an administration that's not holding their agencies accountable. Yeah. And that, at the end of the day, is the only thing is the power of the purse that, that uh, Congress has to work with. There are going to be some some major, probably very nasty fights. But that's why we go up there. Because we're seeing what's happened in the economy, we're seeing what's happened to working families, and we have got to start fighting wouldn't for them. I, Congresswoman, we got to increase that. We got to run. I wouldn't mind seeing prosecutions. That's just me, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne. It's yeah. good to see you. Great to see you. All Thank right. you.